Welcome to episode number 24 of New Citizens, the podcast with your friend, the one and only, your friend, me, Juan Carlos Morales. Election 2020. What a year, ladies and gentlemen. What a year. The two-party system is destroying the United States of America. I repeat, the two-party system is destroying the United States of America. We need a viable presidential candidate that can potentially take office who is not part of the Democratic Party machine or the Republican Party machine. They've been in power for too long, for hundreds of years swapping power back and forth. Uh, it's destroying our nation. The United States is 300 million plus, multi-ethnic, multi-denominational, multi-racial. And uh, this current system, obviously, look at the state of our nation, does not work. The richest, most powerful country on earth, deeply divided, turned against each other at the brink of civil war. At the brink, we're at the brink of civil war. This two-party system is destroying the United States of America. Sad, but true. What happened to Andrew Yang? Andrew, where are you? Where's Andrew? Gotta make a shirt. Where is Andrew? Andrew became a Democratic Party operative. Now he's working hard, even on his podcast, pushing for Biden and Harris to be elected to take over the executive branch of government. When we know for sure, 100%, that they will not implement any of the policies uh, on his platform, which he was promoting and campaigning on. Do you believe that Biden and Harris are going to lead the efforts for universal basic income? When he brought it up on the stage, on the debate stage for the, for the primaries, and both Biden and Harris were on stage, when he brought it up, you know what they did? They chuckled. They laughed. Ha, 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 ha. That's funny. By, uh, Harris said, oh, that's original. We're always happy for new and original ideas. They dismissed it. They dismissed. They don't want people to have money. They don't. They want to keep you poor. The Democratic Party wants to keep you poor. <laughs> they want to keep you poor and also uh, combative. They want to keep you combative. They want to keep you combative and poor and scared and locked down and afraid and standoffish. And idealistic and radical radicalized Just move to the move to the left as far as you can that's good for the Democratic Party it keeps you busy it keeps you angry it keeps you hating everything it keeps you looking for everything that's wrong and nothing that is right I used to be a Democrat I, I was in tears when Barack Obama won because I couldn't believe it I'm a minority I, could, I grew up in a country uh, where I'm a minority and I've been, uh, uh, what's the word? When they, uh, I've been discriminated against because I'm a Hispanic, I'm a short Hispanic male with a funny accent. My last name is not Biden or Stevens or Harris or uh, Mnuchin or Jackson or White. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy that he won. I was so excited. I was in tears. I was so happy I was in tears. He promised change. I thought change would come. And nothing changed. I still had to do uh, more. I still, I still had to do what I had to do with more effort, more work. I still suffered the injustices. Nothing changed. For me, in my life, for my family, nothing changed. Yeah, one thing changed. They forced me to get a... They were charging me money for not for not getting insured under their platform or something like that. That's what changed. And I think I paid more in taxes. And then that changed too while, while they were in office. So, um, they do not want the best for you. 
I'm not saying that the Republican Party wants the best for you either. I'm not a, I'm not a Republican defending Republicans. But what I'm saying is that uh, Andrew Yang is no longer the leader that he could have been because of this two-party political system. They've been swapping power back and forth for hundreds of years. It seems like they're impossible to beat. How do we get rid of this two-party political system? How do we get a third, fourth, and fifth candidate who are really viable and electable by the American people? How? Why? How do we do that? There's ways to do it. And the people with the largest followings in the world, like Joe Rogan, uh, are going to be key in making that uh, transition from the two, from the two, you know, convincing the American people and getting the word out there that there's other options, not just the Democrats and the Republicans. The two-party system is destroying the United States of America. I repeat, the two-party, the two political party system is destroying the United States of America. We're too big of a country. We're too complex of a nation to have the same two options we've always had. We're going crazy. We only have two options. We, st we started listening to uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Omar. Like, they're, like they know anything. They don't know anything. They're kids. They are kids. They're not the leaders. They want to be leaders. They have leader potential. But they don't know anything. They're not going to be the change that you need. The change, t t too radical of a change. They want to break down. Let me, let me put it like this. To destroy anything is easy. You want to implode a building? You can do it in two minutes. A skyscraper. You want to destroy a skyscraper? You can implode it in a matter of minutes. Do you want to build a skyscraper? It's going to take you years. Destroying is easy. Building things that are meaningful and prosperous and successful. That is hard. That is complicated. That doesn't happen overnight. It takes To build a nation, to build a new system, it's going to take hundreds of years. <laughs> For people to believe in it, to get through the kinks, through... It's going to take hundreds of years. We don't have hundreds of years because we only live 80. And I want my daughter to have a good world. And we've done good things. The United States has done great things. It's a great country. And we need to build upon this, the, good, the goodness, the success that we've been able to have. We can't destroy it. We have to build upon it. That's why Andrew Yang was the per He wanted the next, the, uh, the upgraded capitalism, human capitalism. Capitalism and an economy that works for humans, not humans working for corporations. Can't destroy everything and expect uh, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez to uh, be an expert on, on everything. And but well, she's Jesus then. She is Jesus. She, she comes up with a plan, gives it a name. Let's call it the, the, the AOC Bible. And who and she has all the knowledge. She knows exactly what we need in every industry, in every aspect of our lives. She knows exactly the changes we need to make for a better future. She knows it. Thank God she's here. Thank God for Alexandra, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez from the Bronx. Thank God for the Bronx. Come on. Give me a break. Give me a break. They want to destroy, destroy. You know when you're when you're a young rebel, when you're mad at the world, when you're going through these, you know, puberty changes. Everything sucks. You know, every you feel like shit. Everything sucks. You're tired all the time. You're growing disproportionately fast. You're having the hormone. Everything sucks. You look at the world from that perspective. Everything sucks. I grew up in New York, and I was a teenager in New York, and I hated the hell out of New York. I got out of puberty, I started making a little bit of money, and guess what? I loved New York, because I looked at it from a different perspective. I think there's enough in the world for everybody. But we got to respect our nature. We got to respect our nature. And we got to respect the history, the lessons that history has taught us. We know socialism doesn't work. We know that. They try it all the time in different countries, and they, and they fail miserably. We know that capitalism has been the system that has mostly that has most enriched humanity in the history of the world. And we have it right now. Is it perfect? It's not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. It's not perfect. 
capitalism is not perfect, but it plays well within our human nature. Nature of betterment. We want to be better. Nature of competitiveness. We want to compete. We want to overcome challenges. We want to get bigger, better, and stronger, and smarter, and faster. It's our nature. Most of us are this way. Yeah, there's a small minority that aren't. But most of us are this way. We need a system that plays well with that. That's why capitalism is good. Comp you know, it allows for creativity and competition and innovation. Is it imperfect? Yes. It leaves a lot of people behind. It creates a lot of problems overseas with the, with the foreign policies that we've... Fine. But we can make it better. We don't have to tear it down. We can improve upon it. And that's why Andrew Yang was the proper... The proper person to take over. It's not the right time to switch teams. We're in the middle of a pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. An economic crisis. The team that's in power now has been dealing with this for a couple of months straight. They've been in office for three and a half years. Excuse me, three and a half years. They have, they have a team, they have a dynamic, they have momentum. What's gonna happen? Biden gets in and then, in spite of Trump, they're gonna, they're gonna go against everything he did. Even if it was good, they're gonna go again. They're gonna reverse it. They're gonna reverse everything. They're gonna get rid of everything. Because Trump did it, it must be bad. Anti-Trump. That's not gonna move us forward faster. That's not going to be a catalyst for progress, for the cure, for getting uh, the economy. No, it's going to set us back. It's going to set us back. Timing. We cannot ignore timing. Had this been a regular election, no pandemic, no economic crisis, even with an economic crisis, we've done that before. No, econ no pandemic, no public health crisis. I would say, okay, it's okay. The transition of power, that exercise every four, eight years is healthy for a democracy. I agree. But now, now when lives are on the line, people are dying as we speak. Biden sitting on that chair is not going to stop the deaths from occurring. If anything, in that transition, we're going to be set back in the increase of um, casualties and victims and suffering, human suffering will happen. It'll get worse. I hope I'm wrong, because what do I know? I'm just a 34-year-old Colombian-American. I hope I'm wrong, because I don't want more suffering. I want to get back to normal. I want to. I want to go back to making money. I want to go back to uh, to uh, living life and hugging my family and hugging my friends and hanging out with people and celebrating birthdays. I, I missed. Hold on. Woo, I missed. I couldn't celebrate my, my, my daughter's first birthday. I couldn't do it. I want to do that. In March 2021, I want to celebrate my daughter's second birthday. A lo grande. Huge. Big party. Without fear. I want to be dead wrong about things getting worse. But my gut tells me. My gut, not me, not my brain. My gut tells me that a transition of team, that a, tra that a transition at this time, during this crisis, is the wrong move. This guy, like him or not, he's in power now. That team, like it or not, they're working now. They've set up deals now. Things are moving now. Just the act of uh, canceling or destroying what has been done takes time that's going to set us back we don't have time right now to be moving five steps back i'd rather move one step forward one step forward than 10 steps forward and 50 steps back the united states is bigger than donald trump and joe biden and 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 and, and right now the decision has to be made Thinking of the lives, thinking of the process, trusting the scientists. Donald Trump is not creating the vaccines the scientists are. Is it time to completely switch and reverse everything that's been done? That is what is at stake in this election. It's too bad we got to choose from those two. Too bad that there has to be a pandemic right now. But this election is like none that we've ever faced before. So the criteria has to change. Is it time? Is, is this the right time to switch the team? Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon.